There we go. Good morning. Well, I'm excited today. I have a lot of really great information for you. Um, we're going to just review a few things to get started, and then uh, we'll go into our kind of topic for the day. So um, today's uh, topic is work your numbers and know your numbers. And we're also going to work the numbers backwards. Um, but first, I just want to welcome you to the community. And this is a safe space. Um, it's meant for positive feedback. So we definitely want you to communicate with each other within the group and learn how to um, help each other out with whatever you're working on and that where your business, your specific business is. So we're going to recap um, what's going on real quick, and then we'll get into um, our topic for the day. So we're going to recap about the Sustainable Salon Summit. It's May 21st, Green Circle, Vish, Sustainable um, Beauty, and there will be speakers there educating on sustainable business practices. Now, uh, these speakers are from around the world. So it's just an incredible opportunity to educate yourself as a salon owner, as a business professional on new sustainable business practices, what sustainability is and how it can affect your business. And so this particular event is May 21st. It's at the Legends of the Mark um, in South Lake, Texas. So you want to mark that day on your schedule. Make sure that you're available and that um, you can come on out. Um, in the evening, is gonna, it's going to start with education. So it's going to be education during the day. And then the evening will culminate in a red carpet runway show um, with the USA's very first um, collection for Natural League. Uh, also, this is a beautiful venue. Um, it's got an indoor and outdoor space available. There's a stage. It's really an incredible location. So you'll have the opportunity to mingle and network with the professionals and um, also other um, beauty professionals as well as the speakers. There'll be an open bar and have your hors d'oeuvres in the evening. So you don't want to miss this event. Tickets are limited. So get your ticket today. Um, also, I want to review um, just the resources um, that you have available to you in this community. So the first resource is the salon. So we have an almost $2 million salon. We should be hitting that goal between August and September. Um, this salon is located in Keller. It's head case hair studio. It's a $2 million salon. And it was created with sustainable practices um, with equal culture and the profitability. So when you have sustainable practices, it creates a um, culture because what happens is people want to be involved in something. And so when they're brought into the aspect of having this sustainable culture, it really helps you grow that whole um, opportunity to uh, to make your business more profitable and to keep your culture and grow your culture. So that's how the sustainable practices equal culture and equal profitability. And our program is modeled after the salon. So there's education at the salon. We have educators there. Um, you can tour the salon um, and, you know, kind of see how it was set up and what kind of practices and um, that they have in place. And then the second um, resource that you have is the Innovative Beauty Distributors. So we have a distribution house that supplies Naturally products as well as LucaGuard. And Naturally is an organic hair color and retail line. And this line is amazing. It has a very light scent, 100% gray coverage every time. Hybrid line. So this is a hybrid line. It's you're not going to have all this inventory for a semi-permanent line and then another line for men's color and, and all of these different lines. Um, it's a hybrid line. And so you can use your semi, demi or permanent developers um, with this color line. They also have an incredible whitener that really has no damage. The packaging is all recycled and it takes up less space than more lines um, than a lot of other lines. Um, I'm currently using the anti hair loss system that seems to be working really well for me. And um, the products are very concentrated, so you only have to use very little bit. Uh, the best part is that each tube of color produces three to five root touch applications. So if you think about your tube of color that you're purchasing now, how many 
root top touch up applications are you able to get with that color? So um, R2 produces three to five uh, retouches. So at 15 grams for color, 15 um, grams for the developer for just a root retouch, not a pull through. Um, you're really looking at uh, $2.85 per application. If you do the math on your color, I guarantee you it's going to be more than $2.85 for a retouch. So that's the other really great benefit about this um, particular color line. So like I said, it gives you 100% gray coverage. Um, most likely, um, most of the color lines that I know give you uh, one and one third application per box of per tube of color. So if you are really thinking about saving money on your color line, I think it's something to consider for sure. Um, so that's a retouch. It's a larger tube. It's a larger box. So the cost per tube is $11.95. So it's less inventory on your shelf and you're ordering less often. Um, so it's definitely something to think about. It's very, very affordable. Um, they also have, we also carry LucaGuard. It's a skincare line. I started with the moisturizer. Um, what I can say is it, it's pretty remarkable. After two days, I saw a change in my skin, especially when applying my makeup. So I would say um, if you have a salon and spa, it's important to have really good product for your, your spa, your skincare line as well. So we have that available to you. So the Innovative Beauty um, Distributors is run by Brooke Christensen, and she is like the ninja of uh, innovative beauty. She handles all the natural leak and the Luca guard accounts from setting up your account to ordering questions, customer service, as well as shipping. So she is the contact for that. The third resource you have is head case, um, business coaching. This is what Kelly and I do. We coach salons to sustainable practices and innovative beauty, beauty, uh, business structures to grow them into profitability. We do group coaching once a week and we have community and a course. Kelly and I do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, this kind of service requires an application and approval. If you're interested in having coaching um, help for your salon, just reach out and we'll help you get your goals and get you where you need to go. If you're bit tired of being stuck and overwhelmed and tired, and then just reach out in the comments and we'll set up a call to answer your questions. So who's Kelly Swing? So Kelly is the owner of all three businesses. So that's the salon, the distribution house, and the coaching. She's really a visionary. She's someone who just has no limits on what she's capable of achieving. So she really believes that you can go after and make changes in this industry. She came from a corporate background. So her thought process on business structure is very um, innovative because most people in the beauty industry haven't come from that background. They've usually come from a salon, working in a salon background. So she has more of a corporate background, which is extremely helpful. And then I've been a salon owner um, multiple times in my 27 years of um, being in the beauty industry. Also, um, she started having reactions to products. And so she definitely started researching and that research took her worldwide to figure out exactly why she was having reactions, why her team, why the scent was so strong, you know, the products were so strong. Could she find something that worked, but, you know, didn't have all of the chemicals in it. And that's how she came across Natural Leak. And then lastly, her big goal is really just to change the beauty industry, to make the beauty industry uh, responsible and have integrity in their business practices by being becoming sustainable and how that also helped her culture and created the profitability. And so our um, entire program is based on uh, the profitable salon and Keller um, head case hair studio. So some of the things that I want to tell, tell, tell you is that um, we're not going to push a hard sell funnel here, marketing program. We're not going to guilt you um, or, you know, give you something that's going to consume all your time. 
Um, we're not going to sell you overpriced, flashy program um, when you're already struggling and exhausted. We're really here to help people with a real system. We want to help change the industry and be more sustainable for your health, your guests, and our planet. We do, be, um, we do business with integrity and teach the most innovative strategies to grow your business to profitability. Here in this community, we'll give you tips. We're going to answer questions and give you feedback on how to help you grow your business. Um, so ask questions and grow your business. So just put some questions in there and we'll be happy to ask, um, answer them for you. Today's topic is know your numbers and we're going to work our numbers backwards. So we're going to review last, what we did last week. So last week we did your business analysis. So the business analysis is this quick way to see where to begin. It can be very overwhelming when you're a salon owner. There's so many hats to wear. It's hard to know exactly where to start. Um, when you know that there's issues in the business or you're not making the profit that you're wanting. So we reviewed um, the business analysis and that gave you kind of what which areas that you needed to work on the most. And then we reviewed the goal setting. So planning ahead for obstacles that would come up, um, as well as aligning your values with your professional goals. So now we're going to look at your numbers. This is where it can get complicated. Many of you know how to do the math to find your average ticket, but is that the actual number that you need? Is that number going to put money in your pocket? Um, or even your hourly numbers. So sometimes we've all been told, you know, you got to have a $100 average ticket or $100 an hour to try and figure out really how to figure out to how to bring home the money that you really want to bring home. So which of the numbers are the most important and how do you calculate it and how do those numbers help you? So one problem with using the average ticket um, to set revenue goals is that it doesn't really generate how much you will put in your pocket at the end of the month. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So you can set a goal for $10,000 a month. So we're just going to start there because that's the easiest, $10,000 a month. But is that what you really need? You know, or do you need to know how much you're going to take home? So most people, when they set a goal for $10,000 a month, at the end of that month, in their mind, they think that they're going to take home $10,000. Well, that doesn't work out that way. But what if you really do want to take home $10,000 in a month? or maybe 8,000 or whatever your goal might be. So if you were to hit $10,000 in a month, what does that look like to actually take home $10,000? So a lot of these numbers that we're using and that you're going by don't actually answer the question that you really want, which is how do I get it in my hand and not just rolling into the business? And what your true goal really should be um, with all of the math in there and all the facts that you need. So get a pen and paper and let's do the math. So we're going to start with $10,000 goal because that is just a simple number. Um, and we're going to start there. So if we start with $10,000 for the goal, the process would be dividing it by four weeks, which would create $2,500 a week as a weekly goal. Then you would go to how many days your work or how many days you're open. So if you're a salon owner, how many days you're open, um, how many days you work, maybe more as an independent is how you're thinking. How many days is that? So let's just say that you work five days. So that's going to equal 500 per day. So now you have to hit a goal of $500 per day. And then your average hours worked per day. Let's say you work eight hours is your average. So if you were a salon owner, it would be how many stylists, how many hours are available to hit those. So you've got going to have more stylists. So average hours worked per day. So let's say eight hours equals 6250 an hour. So many of us have done this math multiple times. You probably already know that. So you're dividing by the month and then the week. And then the days that you're open, and then how many hours that you're available. 
um, per day. So eight hours in one day. And you're dividing each time for each one of those categories. So it comes out to 62.50 an hour. So you hit that goal and you do 62.50 an hour. And at the end of the month, you don't really see a big change in your paycheck and what you're actually taking home. And the reasons for that is because you're not putting in your overhead. And so this math problem that they love to put out there for everyone to set their goals to really does not give you the information that you actually need. What you actually need is to know how much your rent is on top of that $10,000. And on top of that, how much your product cost is. And on top of that, taxes. So if you're trying to figure out what your hour is, needs to be, it might be better to add in your rent and how much product cost you have at least if you don't want to calculate taxes, that's going to get you closer to that actual goal. So if you reach that $10,000 goal and you're not seeing it in your pocket, that $10,000, then you would need to do the math and change that $10,000 goal and you'd need to add to it. So I'm going to give you an example of that. So let's say we had a $10,000 goal, okay? $10,000 is what we're doing. I've got my Cell phone right here, $10,000, right? Okay, but what's your rent? You know, how much is your rent a month? So I'm just going to say the rent's $200 a week. If you're an independent, if you're a salon owner, then what's your rent? And just add that to the $10,000. So you're going to add, I'm going to say 800 So that equals $10,800. And then I'm going to look back at my last three months of business and see exactly how much I was spending on product during those last three months. And then I would average that out so that I could add it to my goal. So let's just say that you're spending um, $1,000 a month on product um, is what your average is. So we're going to add $1,000 to that. And that equals 11800 now, what about your utilities? So if you're a business owner, you're going to have utilities. If you have own a salon, if you're an independent, you won't have utilities. So you're going to add your utilities to that. Okay. And then if you have an idea um, of where that's at, you would just add that together. So now if you were an independent, your goal would be 11,800. So if you have 11,800, then you go back and divide by four weeks, and then how many days you're open, and then how many hours, and that's going to change your total on what your actual hourly needs to be in order to actually put that money in your pocket. So it's very important that you see the whole picture and that you don't just, oh, I need $100 an hour because that's what I've heard out in the in the salon world, in the salon community that I need $100 an hour because it's a big difference when you actually set the goal with your overhead added to it. Then you're going to get a real number, the number that you really, really need to make decisions about moving forward. One of the things that um, we notice when coaching is when we talk to um independence about how many days they work. Well, if you're only working three days a week, what would happen to your math if you added a day and figured out how to fill that day? You did some ads or did some marketing to fill that other day or to maximize your time. So once you've done this, the next thing that you're really going to look at is circling on your schedule how many hours you are not booked because that's going to tell you how many clients you need in a month to fill your book to hit your goal so first you've got to figure out the real numbers on your goal so if i want to take home ten thousand dollars a month then i have to add, take that ten thousand dollar goal add in all of my overhead 
as much as I can calculate in easily to get a, a decent number, to get a, a pretty good hard number. And then I'm going to divide it out by how many weeks, by how many days I'm open, and then how many hours, right? And then once I've done that, and I'm still not bringing home that $10,000 that I'm looking for, you have to go to your schedule and look at your schedule to see exactly how many hours you had available that were not booked. And that, that the, the focus then would be how to fill the, fill your book. Okay. And then how to get those spots filled, just like you did building it from the very beginning, you're constantly building. You're constantly building that never, ever stops. So the areas that you want to think about when it comes to how many days per week you're working and how many hours you're working. So if you can't hit that goal, if, you're, if your hourly rate is so high that you couldn't charge a haircut for that hour, um, like maybe you're you're in order for the days that you're working, maybe you're only working three days a week. Well, if you're only working three days a week, your, you know, your goal is going to be somewhere in the 70, 80, 90, you know, range, depending on what your prices are. So if you're you're needing to run a certain amount, you have to make sure that you're available those days and that you are filling an amount. So that can change your numbers, how many hours you work, how many days you work can absolutely change your hours. So those are things that you want to think about when you're running these numbers. So once you have the formula, the real formula, where you're adding in your overhead, then you can really look and evaluate your business, figure out what you want to do and how to get yourself where you want to go and changing your hours of operation and changing how many days you're um, available can change that. And then also, if you're not hitting it, go back and look at your schedule to see exactly where you weren't booked. Tighten, learn to tighten up your schedule and get clients in to fill the book. So if you work three days a week, I mean, are you just running in, doing the clients and then running out? If you're an independent and you're doing that, then you're not setting aside any time for you to build your business. You're just taking the clients. And if, whether you're an independent or a salon owner, you still have to build your business. There's still marketing that needs to be done and not just posting hair, but real marketing, like, you know, running a model call or, or running an ad where you can really actually benefit and get some people in the chair that become customers uh, later. So how many spaces do you need to fill in your book? Look at your schedule. Look at your goals and figure out exactly where you need to be because once you're focused on that and your focus is, okay, well, I had, you know, 52 hours last month that was not booked during the hours that I have on my door for operation. Well, if I have 52 hours and those should run 62, 50 an hour, uh, that's where my hole is. That's why I'm not bringing home $10,000 in my hand. So it's important when you're doing this goal setting that you figure out exactly where you need to be, exactly what number it is. It doesn't matter what number it is. You can reach any goal. You can reach any goal that you want to reach. But if you don't know what the goal is or the number that you're calculating isn't correct, then you're going to have a hard time getting there. So if you're a salon owner, you want to really pull those numbers. And if you're only using um, software system like Square, um, you're going to have a harder time figuring out those numbers. The other thing that you want to consider is in your totals, if you're using Square, for example, separate out your retail. Do you want your retail number in that, that $10,000 goal? Because really your retail, if you remove the retail from the goal, um, so that you're not seeing that on Square as, okay, my total this month was $8,500, but that included my retail sales. Well, you still have to take whatever your retail sales were, and let's say you bought your product for $10 and you sold it for $20. $10 has to go back to replace the product. 
The other $10 goes in your pocket minus the tax. So if you add your retail sales to your total that you're making, you're also not going to see that in profit in your hand because that number is not a real number for what you're actually receiving take home because there's a big difference between what you gross, which is everything that you made, everything that you made that month. And then your net, what you're actually taking home, what you're actually making. Um, and then obviously your paycheck. So if you're a salon owner, then your actual paycheck, what you get to take home. So when you're calculating your goal, if you just say, I want to make $10,000 a month, and then you're just, just in heart, you know, just feel brokenhearted at the end of the month because you didn't make $10,000 in your paycheck. Remember, you have to add in um, all of your overhead into those goals. And it would be wise to take your retail sales out because your retail sales is a separate entity really in your bookkeeping that keeps that from, um, cause not all that money is going into your pocket. So it'd be important. You could take your retail sales and divide it by two and that would get you closer, um, to your goal if you wanted to do that, <clears throat> but I wouldn't add it in. So, for example, we're going to go through it one more time so it makes sense. We have, we're going to start with the 10,000, whatever you want to take home. Let's say you want to take home 8,000 a month, or maybe you want to take home 20,000 a month. What does that look like for you? How does that actually, how do you get paid 20,000? How do you get paid 10,000 or 8,000 or whatever your goal is? So you're going to put the goal at the top. And that's going to be your $10,000. We're going to start there. Then you're going to add to that your rent and your product. And you can add taxes if you want. You're, you're going to add your utilities if you're a salon owner. If you have utilities, you're going to add insurance. You're going to add and, and anything that is an overhead for you. Your internet service, all of that. You're going to add that to it. That's your actual goal number. Now start to divide by four weeks. And now divide that again by how many days you're open, how many days you work. And then you're going to divide that by how many hours you're open per day, your average day. So if you work five days a week, and you work eight hours those five days, or you work however, you need to average those hours out and divide it. So maybe one day you work five hours, and another day you work three hours. Um, so you want to average, add them together and divide it out. And it will tell you exactly what your hourly number needs to be. So once you know that, Every day that you go in, you can say, okay, well, I only missed it by this amount, or I only missed it by this amount. But then you're like, well, then how do I get to the next level? Well, when you get to the next level, what you're looking for is how many holes are in your schedule? How many hours were you not working? And then that also will help you with price increase. So if you need to do a price increase to get your your number where it needs to be to make the money that you want to make. The other thing that you can do is reduce your costs. So we talked about natural leak and the color line and, and the retail line and how um, financially beneficial it is. Maybe your color line is really expensive. Are you measuring? Are you wasting a lot of product? So those things are, can play into your cost, your overhead. So the only way remember to build a business and to grow it, make more money, more revenue is either to decrease your overhead, your costs and increase sales or revenue. So decrease your costs or grow your sales or your revenue. So there's the only way to increase the business. So those are the things that you're going to want to look at. I'm super um, excited to see what those numbers look like for each of you and how that works out for your ability to grow your business with real numbers, not this pretend numbers um, where your actual, your goal is actually meeting up with what it is that you're trying to achieve. 
So I hope that's super helpful for you today. Um, that's your big tip and in your information. Again, don't forget about the summit. Make sure that you sign up or um, get your ticket for that as well. Um, I believe um, Brooke dropped a coupon code into the um, to the uh, messages. So you can click on that and there's a coupon code available. Um, and that's really where we're at. So I hope you have a great day. And if you have any questions or you need help doing the math or the process, by all means, leave us a message. We'll be more than happy to help walk you through it so that you can really get a number that's true um, for you to really set a goal. So you're going to have multiple goals. Remember, we talked about your business analysis and the business analysis kind of gave you an idea of what it was you were missing in your business, um, where the areas were. We talked about this and where your is uh, your um, business, um, where, whether you were at a one to a 10 and where you were at. And so you circled those numbers. So once you list those goals in order, then you want to think about what is the most important thing to me? What are my values? What do I want? What is my, what do I really want? What's the most important thing in my life? My most important thing in my life is, you know, Wednesday night, making sure I make it to Wednesday night church or having Sundays off or being home with my kids by a certain time. Um, whatever your personal values are, you want to put your goals in order of those values because you're going to be more likely to reach those goals. Okay. So that's important. So then when you get your goals here, then we talked about figuring out how to overcome obstacles for those goals. Okay. So we're overcoming the obstacles that we know are going to happen with those goals ahead of time and planning for them so that we have a better chance of overcoming them. So we've got, you know, two or three goals going and we put them in order for what's most important to us most important to you as an owner, most important to you personally. And then what you're doing is you're going in and finding out what the goal is for the business overall. So maybe you're working on marketing and you're working on getting your average ticket up and those two things go hand in hand. So that's going to help you figure out. Because at first when we start, you're like, I have no idea, you know, where to begin. So this will help you move forward. And that's the process that we're taking you through each week is to help you move forward in your um, growth and in your business and give you the tools you need that are true and real for you to implement into your business. So week one, you set your goals and figured out what you needed to work on in your uh, salon and in your beauty business. And week two, we're looking at the overall goal for the business for the month. Um, so monthly, where, what do you want to take home? Because any other number really doesn't matter. The only number that really matters is what you're going to have in your pocket. So if you don't have those numbers correct, and they're teaching you to do this very um, simple process of dividing by you know, the week and then the day and then the hour, you're not going to have the right number. So now we know how to do that. Add in your overhead. And now you will run those numbers and figure out where you're supposed to be and look back over last month, the month before. How many hours were you not working? Now, some of you are going to have software systems um, that will tell you how many hours were not booked. What I found in my business is when I actually went back and counted the hours that were not scheduled or were not booked, um, I found that the number was higher than what I was getting on my report or it was incorrect. So once you add the, take that number and um, add um, in how many, so if you didn't meet your $10,000 goal, of making that in your pocket. You go back and look in your schedule and circle how many hours you weren't available and add that hour to it times it times that hour, that $62.50 an hour you have to run or $70 or $80 an hour you have to run and see if it brings you up to the right amount. That will check your math for you so that you'll know, okay, this is where I need to be. This math is imperative to your business. 
period. You have to know where you're at. Those of you who just have Square do not have the reporting systems available to you that a salon owner who has a full system, uh, software system for booking has available to them. Um, so you're not going to get those numbers. So you're going to have to really dig a little bit more to figure out exactly where you're at. I want to talk about one other thing today. Uh, this last couple of weeks, I've been going out to salons uh, to definitely talk about, invite them to the summit and just um, connect with different salons. It was very interesting out there. There are a lot of you struggling. There's a lot of businesses. I went to many, many, many businesses that between one and three in the afternoon had absolutely no guest in the salon whatsoever or had one guest, two. Maybe as we approached three o'clock, I saw maybe, you know, a full salon have three guests, no one in the waiting room. We have to really build our industry. If you want to make money, you have to actually work the business. For an owner, it's important for you to have a day during the week that you do not work behind the chair and you actually run your business. You do the numbers, you plan, you take care of issues, you actually just work on the business. If you're not doing that, I highly recommend that you find time to work on your business. If you're an independent and you're not spending, you're just running in doing hair and leaving, running in doing services and leaving, uh, you're going to have a hard time building your business. You have to actually take that time. It's really important. Um, you're going to find that once you start focusing on that, the business will move and it will change. All right. Well, that's what I have for you today. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I've got a, mm -hmm. a bit of a cough, as you can see. So um, we'll get with you next week, same time, 10 a.m. on Monday, and we'll review what we went over and go on to the next topic. So I'm super excited. You'll all get an email on that. We'll review what we did and then move on to the next level. So I hope you have a great day and we'll see you soon. See you next week. Bye-bye.